Hi everybody, this is Jason Hammond, the Science Outreach Manager and Life Science Educator here at the Children's Museum Houston. Today I'm at the math cart to show you a really fun activity called Tangrams. And this is being brought to you by ConocoPhillips and it's part of our Math Mania Wonder Week. So let's all get manic about math, yeah! Now, if you direct your attention over to here, you'll see I have a little bag filled with seven different shapes. And over here, I've taken those seven shapes out. I have a parallelogram, a square, and five differently sized right triangles. These right here make up all you need to make tangrams. And tangrams have been a puzzle that human beings have used for thousands of years. They do believe the earliest evidence of a tangram is in 18th century CBE, China. So we're talking a couple thousand years ago, more like 4,000 years ago. So what a tangram basically is, is you would take these seven shapes and you would make something like this house here. And you would make this house putting the shapes in a proper order. So if you look really carefully, right here is a shadow version of the house, and it looks pretty similar. But sometimes you wanna be sure of things. So what you would do is, is you would look on the other page and you can see which shapes are being used to make that tangram. So tangrams are very, very, very useful for when you want to become spatially aware and have a good acumen, a good understanding of space. So these puzzles are very, very helpful in doing that. And we can do an example of one really quickly right now, because if you look at over here again, my tangram, there's a second one, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth, all these different shapes. I'm gonna to try to attempt to make this one without looking at the other side, to see the shapes that I would use. And remember, I'm not gonna use this pack. This pack is going away. I am going to use these seven shapes. What's cool about my book is that it's magnetic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the tangram I have right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it here with these new shapes. And I'm gonna do it backwards. So I'm gonna do it so I can see it, then I'll flip it over so you can see it, okay? So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna start with a little triangle and I'm gonna put it right here. And then I'm gonna take a big triangle and put it next to it here. And then another triangle like this. Okay, so so far I've used three different triangles to make the side of my home. I'm gonna move them over just a little bit. If you look, there's a little piece sticking out right over here. You see that right by my finger? I'm gonna use a little triangle again for that. So I'm gonna use my little triangle like this maybe? Nope, I'm gonna use it like this. All right, and then I'm gonna put my parallelogram here. And you wanna fit them together, so sometimes you might have to move it up a little bit, which is okay because you see here, there's a little piece sticking out. That would be that right there, so that's good. And then I'm gonna put my square here like that. And then I'm gonna put my last triangle right here. And look, they look pretty similar, don't they? They look pretty good. Now we can go ahead and look at this, and you can see one small right triangle, two big right triangles, one small right triangle, the parallelogram, the square, the space in between, and the medium-sized right triangle. Okay, so I'm pretty spatially aware. I did pretty good. I had never looked at that one before. I just sort of put it together. What's interesting about these seven shapes is they can make, right now, they think up to 6,500 different patterns. Think about that. 
These seven shapes can make 6,500 different patterns and they do not have to be this size. This triangle, as long as it's the same kind of right triangle, can be a bigger version of that right triangle. This smaller right triangle can be a bigger version as long as the ratios are correct. As long as this one and this one still sort of look like that, they can become bigger in size. So you can make really, really big tanagrams, okay? Now you might be thinking to yourself this whole time, what does this have to do with math? It has a lot to do with math. Geometry is the study of shapes. So what you could be doing while you're messing around with these tanagrams is you could be thinking about things like the area of a right triangle and the perimeter of a right triangle. Now I don't know the exact measurements of these uh, sides, but I can tell you how to figure out the perimeter and area of a right triangle. To find the perimeter, you would add the length of this, whatever length you do, inches, centimeters, whatever, plus the length of this, plus the length of this. So you would do your, ba your base times your height times this one over here, not times plus. So base, height, this angle, all add them together. So let's say it was three, two, and two, it would be seven. Now let's say we wanted to find the area of the right triangle. We take the base and the height, we times them together, so two times two, which is four, and we would cut it in half, which is two. So the area would be two. We can also figure out the perimeter and area of a square. We can measure all these sides. So we measure this side, and we'll say it's three. We know that all the sides are three because a square has all equal sides. So to find the perimeter of this, you would go three plus three plus three plus three, and that's 12. And then to find the area of this square, you would take three and you would square it. So three times three, and you would get nine. So one more time, three plus three plus three plus three equals 12 is the perimeter. Three squared, three times three, nine is the area. And that's all you gotta do to find these things. So while you're doing stuff like this, you can do geometry, which will help you later on when you get older in school and in life. So that's how you can do math with this as well. Now, you can make your own tanagrams. There's, there's guides on Google that will tell you how to make them, or you can buy a set like this. The sets are pretty cool because they're really, really useful. If you make some tanagrams, go ahead and re, uh, take a picture of it or record what you're doing and post it to our social media sites. We'd love to see what you're doing. So you make a tanagram, you take a picture, and you put it on Instagram, you put it on Facebook, you put it on our Twitter account. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. When you hit that button, you'll be able to get notifications of all our different math activities, science activities, our story times, our art activities, our Mr. O oh, oh, Wow moments, and our Tater Tot Tot tunes. Don't forget, everybody, we are going to be opening June 8th, and we hope to see you when we reopen. But until then, have a great, great day or a great, great week, or a great, great month, whenever you watch this, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, bye for now.